Okay, in this video we're going to talk about the difference between independent and dependent variables and towards the end of the video we're going to talk about how to write and create a proper hypothesis. Whenever a scientist is doing a, an experiment, you have to set it up correctly. And the easy way to do that is to, before you start, figure out what you're looking for, so what you're going to change and what you're going to measure. We call these things the dependent variable and independent. So real quick, an easy way to define these is the dependent variable is what the scientist is looking to measure. The scientist could be measuring temperature or the change in oxygen at certain levels in, in the atmosphere. I usually find the dependent variable first because, in my opinion, it's easier to pick out of a situation. The independent variable is what the scientists can change. So if I were looking at how students' grades were impacted by homework, what I would change is the type of homework given, and I could measure the dependent variable, would be their homework grades. All right, let's get a few practice problems in with this. So here's the situation. Students of different ages were giving the same jigsaw puzzle to put together. They were timed to see how long it took to finish the puzzle. So let's go ahead and get practice at finding the dependent variable first because that's the easiest. So we have to ask ourselves, what's being measured here? And for this situation, there's really only two different things. He's either measuring the different ages or he's measuring the time it took to solve the puzzle. In this situation, the dependent variable, what he's measuring, he's measuring the time it took to finish the puzzle. So that's our dependent variable. Our independent variable, remember, is what the scientist or person is changing. It says explicitly in our situation here that they were given the same jigsaw puzzle. So that's clearly not our, our independent variable. The only thing that was changed was the age of the student. So again, he is measuring the time it took to finish the puzzle, and what he changed was the age of the student trying to solve the puzzle. So here's a different scenario. I would suggest pausing the video and trying to see if you can figure out the dependent variable and independent variable for yourself. So the situation is, a student wanted to see how the temperature of water changed at different depths of the pond. Again, I find it easiest to figure out the dependent variable first. So we have to look at what he's measuring. Okay. He's, in this situation, he's measuring how the temperature of the water had changed. What he was changing in here, he was changing the depth of the water he was looking at. It says he changed at different depths of a pond. The reason why finding the independent and dependent variable is important because in the scientific method, you have to have a hypothesis. In order to have a hypothesis, you have to identify the dependent and independent variable first. But there are three different, or the three parts to writing a good or a correct hypothesis. One of those things is it has to be short. The whole goal in science is it has to be testable. And it has to be phrased in a way that if independent variable, so if I change this, then dependent variable, then this will happen. So if I change this, then this will happen. So let's go ahead and get a one or two practice hypothesis in using the same examples we had used earlier in the video. So looking back at this situation, the dependent variable was he was measuring the water temperature and the independent variable he was changing the depth of the pond. So if we take a look at what his hypothesis could be, we go if. So if independent variable, if I change this, what did the student change here? He changed the depth 
of the pond he was looking at. So if the water is deeper, or I could have also said shallower, depends on how you want to phrase it. If the water is deeper, then dependent variable. Then what do I expect for my water temperature? I would guess that if I go down in the lake, the water will get cooler. So I could say, if the water is deeper, then the water temperature will decrease. And this isn't the exact correct answer. You could phrase this in multiple ways and still have a correctly written hypothesis. All right, if you want to get some practice with this, I would pause the video and try writing a hypothesis for this situation. So remember that the what he was changing, the independent variable, was the age of the student, and he was measuring the amount of time it took to solve the puzzle. So our hypothesis could be, remember it's got to start with if, so if independent variable, if I change this, so maybe if these students are older, if the students are older, then dependent variable. Then what do you think is going to happen to the amount of time? I would guess if the students are older, then they can solve the puzzle quicker. All right, so I hope that helps. Um, always take a look back at your note packet or ask me for specific help when you're in class.